So Christian, I would be curious your biggest takeaway from from our our time with Andrew and maybe your time too because you you spent a little bit more. But I'll tell you my biggest takeaway, Drew, was that it all starts with the way you look at things and pay attention to things. And when we were going through your training, one of the things that you were teaching us was that humor is in the way you look at it. And you started to see things you wouldn't have seen before. You started to pay attention, or I started to pay attention to things I wouldn't have paid attention to. And it just got easier just because of the way that I looked at things, right? Absolutely. Yeah. It all starts with that kind of that sense of humor, that, that perspective on the world. Like it's, it's the things that you find interesting. Like I, I don't know if, if people like when watching videos and stuff, if you're on a zoom call, I'm constantly playing the like zoom game of like what's in that person's background. Right. So like, as soon as we've joined, I'm like looking at Chris's background and it's like, all right, that's a fantastic orange velvet chair. Like how smooth that must be to sit in. Right. So I'm thinking about that. I'm looking at the books on the shelf. Like, I wonder what the best book on that shelf is, which one's good, etc. I'm looking at Christian's background and I'm like, okay, that's clearly the bottom of a fighter jet. But in some ways, it's like that missile kind of looks like something else. So I'm like, it's kind of a little bit weird that kind it's up phallic? over his head. Uh, well, no. so I, I, female, what's, what's, right? Like, that's yeah, what I see it as. Female top. Like, what's I don't know if there's a word phallic that's also. Oh, you see boobs? Nipplish? Is maybe really? the right, I don't know, but like you kind of see, so it's just like, and that to me is so appropriate for Christian based on how, how I met him, like, and whatever, but like <laughs> you play those types of like this perspective game of what's just a little bit different. And that's where it all starts. It's all what's, what's interesting to you. What makes you go like, huh, why is that like that? And that develops your sense of humor. And from that sense of humor, you de develop your like ability to humor the jokes that you think of. But you, you see this in stand-up comedians, right? Like, you know, I love Eddie Izzard, but his his sense of humor is very different than, say, Chris Rock, who is also great, which is very different than Dave Chappelle, who, which is very different than Ali Wong, which is very different than Tig Notar. Like, they all have their specific take or view on the world. And that's where humor starts, is, is what you find interesting or what you find, uh, not even necessarily funny, but what you're just curious about. What makes you go, huh? Yeah. It, it, yeah, it changed the way I looked at things. I started paying attention more, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, what was your biggest takeaway, Christian? Very similar. So I thought that uh, the way that I would describe it is, is that I became more enriched in life. And yeah. thing, things have a little bit more depth and a little more meaning. And, and with that observation and trying to like just see the funny and regular every day, it ended up making life a little bit more enjoyable. Um, so I'm actually, I'm happy. I'm like laughing and smiling down the street. And like, you know, like I, I saw the weirdest thing yesterday when I was walking to work and like, normally it would be like the worst thing in the world, but like <laughs> somebody, up, somebody shooting up heroin is funny. <laughs> and it was, a, it was great. It was a great story. Like that's, you don't get to see that kind of stuff every day. So, uh, it was, it was a welcome to New York, but yeah, speaking of structure, um, I was going to do this, uh, this book and it was an all almond diet, but that's just nuts. <laughs> would, would you describe his, his style, Andrew, as more like Rodney Dangerfield? Like Christians, um, it's a more confident Rodney Dangerfield because Rodney Dangerfield is very much of like, I get that, I get no respect and everything is like, you know. Self-deprecating? Um, is very self-deprecating and all that. Like, you know, um, I, I think he has a joke that's something like when I was born, my, you know, the, the, the doctor, you know, slapped me on behind because I was crying and then slapped me in the face because I was ugly or something like that. It's very, very self-deprecating. I think Christians is a little bit more confident than that. I, I, but uh, no, I think it's a great sense of humor. I still think about, and this is the value, like you said, humor allows you to connect with people. It creates bigger connections because I still think about one of the things that Christian was working on when we were working together was going to the grocery store. And like the fact that you're wearing a mask now, you can't like, you can't separate the bag. So now every time I'm in the, I'm in the grocery store, I think of Christian when I'm trying to separate those yeah. bags because this humor that he articulated and you're like, oh my God, you're so, so right. So it's a great way to connect. And what's great about it too is like sometimes that connection happens even when you're no longer in the room because you're like, Oh, that's such a funny thing. Next time I experience that thing that he talked about, like, I guess the next time I see someone shooting heroin, I'll think of Christian as well. Hopefully that's not too common, 
of a thing, but right, it creates that connection. And so it's, it's a great, you know, uh, he, he has great observational humor as well. Yeah, he's, he's for a long, for, you know, as long as I've known him, he's one of the funniest people that I, that I know. But it's interesting to see him with structure. Mm -hmm. Like the change is very um, interesting because he's always been funny, right? He's naturally funny, but there's a, there's a difference. And I think I, I saw um, an interview once with Louis C.K. I think it was Chris Rock and maybe Seinfeld and somebody else. And Ricky Gervais. There, yeah. There's a HBO special right. called Talking Funny or something like that. It's a fantastic special. Yeah, and they were talking about how they have friends that when they're like hanging out playing poker or whatever, can like literally have them in stitches. But they step up in front of a microphone and they're not funny anymore. Like it's a different art to be able to do it in front of an audience and bend a room is completely different than just being funny. And I've kind of seen that evolution with Christian where he, he could do it reactively. He was just naturally funny, but now he can apply it. He can, he can apply it to stories and to lessons and things like that. So I, I think, um, you know, it's, it's awesome. Like it's fun. It's fun to watch. Yeah. When it's, and it's a great thing to recognize is that, uh, you don't have to be a stand up comedian to be funny. You don't have to do stand up to use humor to, you know, build better relationships with your clients or to, uh, make people laugh, etc. But you can learn from them if you want to, right. It can help you make it even a little bit stronger. And so, yeah, there's a difference between conversational humor and presentational humor and what you would do in a comedy club versus what you would do in, uh, you know, an office setting, etc. But, those techniques can meld together in that one, especially as it becomes second nature. So like, you know, when you first start to learn them, it's like, okay, the comic triple, it's like, okay, very specific and rigorous and all that. And then as you ingrain that into your behavior and how you speak it, you just start to naturally start to speak that way. And I don't know, Christian, if you're starting to recognize that as well. I'm getting there. Not as, I'm not as fast as you are at it and recognizing it. But when, when Chris told me that story yesterday, I immediately thought, we can attach a comic triple to this thing and exaggerate it and make it a bigger deal. I almost want to tell it, but I know that we can't, but, um, but it's, it's interesting how you do start to think in threes and sixes and nines, I guess, mm -hmm. yeah. like you start to go into the multiples and everything. But yeah, the, the thing that's really impressive is, is that not only do you have that system for the creating the humor, your ability to apply it at the right situations, especially when I'm thinking about clients, right. Mm -hmm. And if we're in a, in a service department, we're dealing with a client, like how do we use that humor to break the ice and everything? And, and your system identifies those opportunities to quickly like respond to that. And that's mm -hmm. what I really, really like about what you do is that you can apply it to the business world really easily. Thank you so much for watching this clip of Service Drive Revolution. Now you can catch the full episode on YouTube, iTunes, or Spotify, or wherever you consume your podcast. If you have any questions, go ahead and post them in the comments below. Make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon so you're notified when we post new episodes. I'm Chris Collins and you can find me on Facebook and Instagram at Chris Bulldog Collins. And I'll see you again on the next episode.